BFM 89.9, The Business Station. You're listening to Open for Business, I'm Christine Wong. When pandemic lockdown restrictions were imposed, the sports industry took a massive hit, especially in the mass market sector. For Benjamin Yao, the CEO of sports technology provider Checkpoint Spot, it was imperative that they find another way. He's joining me on the line today to discuss the impact of the pandemic on mass sporting events, the new direction that the company is heading in, and also their massive virtual event dedicated to fighting corruption. Yeah, thank you, Christine. Uh, Basically, Checkpoint Spot, we are a sports technology company. Uh, we provide platforms and solutions to power mass participation races like marathons, ultras, cycling, triathlons. So we basically power most of the uh, uh, serious races. Uh, that was, of course, before the pandemic. Basically, if you're a race organizer, you will come across us uh, in any one of our services from before your event starts during your event and even after your event. So we have the entire solution to actually power your race. Fantastic. Now, the company started in 2015, but you came on board in 2019. Uh, Do you have an experience in the sports industry before that? Uh, Not exactly. Uh, I actually came across Checkpoint Sport. It was in late 2017. Mm -hmm. I was kind of flirting with the company. I used the word flirting because I was uh, actually attending some of the events that they were doing their work. This is where I started to observe the company. What attracted me was actually, I saw two areas which attracted me. One was, uh, it's actually a small team. I see uh, the team, but the team is actually quite agile. They are quite energetic team. Uh, what I find is that they are in an industry which is quite interesting, but except that, you know, the team is small and it's kind of raw. And I'm kind of attracted to the philosophy of the original founders. There's actually four of them, actually, the original founders. Three of them are actually avid runners. That's how they started the company. Uh, they go on a philosophy or because they attended actually quite a lot of uh, running events. Uh, especially international running events. So when they attended the event, they see oh, there's actually quite a lot of things that the big events, they have the luxury of providing to the runners. But when we come back to Malaysia, we find that the smaller event organizers actually lack the support, lack that uh, financial you know, and, and the technological support to make or elevate the standards of their event. Mm. So they were thinking like, why can't we just you know, develop homegrown event and let that, you know, that technology be cheap enough for us to actually elevate the standard of the, you know, the industry. That's how we got started. Yeah. Right. So when you came on board officially, I suppose, instead of uh, just flirting <laughs> in uh, 2019, there was a kind of new direction that you were trying to take the company. And can you talk to me a little bit about that? Yeah. So uh, the, the one year of 2018, that's when I really see the, uh, the potential of the company. Uh, that was actually the time where I actually uh, approached some investors uh, because I told the founding team, right? You want to do it big, you want to do it right. I think uh, there is a potential, but you got to actually uh, find more, you know, a capital injection and grow these businesses. So I presented to a few uh, potential investors at a point in time, right? Basically, what I showed them was uh, this is actually a gem a diamond that if you polish it well, it will become a glittering diamond, right? So I managed to actually speak to some uh, foreign investors, uh, which I got them on board, uh, which that is why I officially came in as the CEO in uh, 2019, because one of the mandate is for me to actually restructure the company Mm -hmm. uh, for the next stage of growth. All right. Yeah. Fantastic. Now, can you just tell us a little bit about some of the products and services offered uh, by Checkpoint Spot? You mentioned sports technology, but what exactly does that mean? Okay. So imagine you are right now trying to organize a race, a marathon, mm-hmm. where you're expecting 10,000 participants to join the event. Right. So there's a lot of things that goes on behind the event itself. So the first thing you would worry about is, okay, how am I going to get my 10,000 people to be registered for my event? So you will come to us and say, hey, I want a registration ticketing platform, right? I want you to be able to accept what kind of payment. I want you to be able to to, uh, uh, accommodate global audience. 
and then uh, they will come on board on our registration platform. Uh, our registration platform has got quite a lot of features, things like it will be help you to viral your event. It will help you to uh, have some referral program to, you know, to spread your event around. We even have fundraising module where, uh, which we introduced actually early this year. Over the span of, I think, uh, these uh, few months, we managed to collect about 100,000 ringgit from uh, about three or four events. So these are uh, part of the solutions that we have. Before your event or race day, you would have, uh, uh, I call it a two or three days event where you will cater to that type 10,000 participants where they will come and collect their running t-shirt, their running beep and so on. Uh, you need a solution, uh, you need a system to actually make sure that there's no queue, make sure there's no, you know, backlog, make sure everything is accurate, make sure you don't have losses or uh, what they call missing uh, t-shirts and stuff like that. Uh, we have actually solutions to manage the entire event for that. Then of course, during the event day, the most critical part of the entire race is actually your timing. Mm -hmm. How fast you run, who are the number one, number two, number three. So we have various technology that caters to race timing. We use uh, technology like RFID, we use technology like NFC, right? Uh, uh, and we even have GPS uh, technology where we use for the more extreme sports uh, where, where, you know, the runners actually run into jungles and uh, areas which is inaccessible so that, you know, for security uh, purposes, you will probably want to track them, you know, just in case anything happened. Right. Then, of course, the final part is post-race. After the event, everybody is eager to get their results. So we will publicize their results officially on our uh, web page. We will be even be able to match the photos of uh, these runners because the, the, the next things you will want to do is after I run is, hey, I want to see myself in action, right? Mm -hmm. So instead of going through that 3,000, 10,000 photograph, you probably, you know, will be served with a, a range of photograph, which likely you'll be in. And then, of course, at the end of the day, I would download my certificate of uh, participation. Right. So the entire solution is actually powered by us. I see. And I'm curious because looking at your website, uh, which is uh, checkpointspot.asia, correct? Uh, that's right. Right. So hypothetically, if I were someone that was interested in organizing an event like that, I don't actually see, you know, a feature on your website that allows me to do that. Uh, do people just go through the contact us page or what's the process? Yeah, usually they will contact us because uh, different races will kind of have different requirement. Like I was, uh, uh, you know, uh, suggesting just now, there are organizers who says, hey, I am a NGO. I want to raise fund. I want to do this walk or do this run to mm -hmm. raise fund. So I need your race module. So right. we have to activate the race module for you. I see. Yeah. So yeah, so they will contact us directly. Got it. And also you guys have um, a CPS shop as well, where uh, you also resell quite a number of, uh, quite a variety of sports equipment as well. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. That's actually our new venture. Mm -hmm. uh, partly due to the pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we are thinking it's time for us to actually go into e-commerce to at least pilot the sphere of e-commerce. So we started this shop. Uh, it's actually working very well. So for now, uh, for once, the race organizers right now, besides opening an event and registering their event, they actually can sell their official merchandise. Mm. So, and we find that it's actually working very well. So instead of maybe you buying, you know, uh, one t-shirt right now, hey, you, you're buying a series of collection. So that adds revenue to the organizers. Right, absolutely. And, you know, as you uh, mentioned, you know, it gives people a platform uh, to be able to, I guess, offer their products to a, a different audience as well. But tell me a little bit about, you know, creating the relationships with some of these brands you've got, uh, like Asics and Ultra and Topo on the website. Uh, you know, tell me a little bit about how you manage to create these relationships with these brands uh, to get them on the on the e-commerce platform. Well, uh, for those people who are in the sports industry, uh, chances are, especially the running industry, chances are they will know us. So, of course, these brands uh, don't really collaborate, which uh, I would say with uh, technology providers uh, in this case, but uh, we do know them. So, when we presented them the idea of, uh, of our e-commerce portal, so, you know, a, a couple of the brands says, okay, let, let's start and do this uh, together and let's experiment with this, right? In fact, we find that it's actually quite interesting because uh, 
things that we sell, uh, I mean, our best sellers are actually, uh, I call it sports watches, right? So I will presume most runners would have sports watches, but they still buy, you know, uh, from us because probably they trust our brand. They've seen us, they've been with us for many years. Yeah. Right, I see. So it's a mutual uh, benefit for both parties, I suppose. Now, uh, we're going to take a short break for some messages. But after that, we will discuss in further detail how Checkpoint Spot was affected by the pandemic. So do stay tuned to Open for Business here on BFM 89.9. Bloggers for Malaysia. BFM 89.9. You're listening to Open for Business on BFM 89.9. I'm Christine Wong and on the line with me today is Benjamin Yao. He is the CEO of sports technology provider Checkpoint Spot. And before the break, we just talked a little bit about some of the products and services that they offer in terms of the mass market sector in the sports industry. So I think the number one question that we ask uh, most people that come on the show, of course, over the past year, is how you guys have been affected by the pandemic. And for you especially, and for Checkpoint Spot especially, you know, as we touched on briefly before the break well there aren't really any massive sports events at the moment right there's no big races or marathons or anything like that so tell me a little bit about that journey of how you guys pivoted throughout the pandemic oh yeah our industry was a uh, badly hit yeah uh, that's for sure until today i mean it has been almost a year plus our industry is still in a lockdown uh, per se yeah? because there's no physical event there's no, no mass participation event so a lot of people are struggling uh, I would say last year in January, February, we were ha- we were actually having the the you know the time of our life because the, uh, the activities was growing, the activities was so you know uh, so much happening at that time. And come March, it was suddenly a hundred percent, you know, ninety degree, uh, hundred eighty degree U turn. I would say so everything stopped. Uh, it took us about two months to actually. Uh, grapple with the situation to stabilize internally. Of course, uh, like any company, we have to reduce our overheads. Uh, we have to manage our running costs. We have to manage our you know, business cash flow and stuff like that. So it, it was tough. It was tough. But uh, I mean, with the team that we have, luckily, we managed to stabilize it in a couple of months. So we were lucky at that time. So after that stabilization, we were thinking, hey, this is going to be long. What do we do after that, right? So we actually came out, the team actually came out with a plan and said, hey, let's see what we could add value to the industry because it's not only us suffering, right? Uh, other people are suffering as well. Mm. So immediately we have a two, kind of like a two-prong approach. The first prong approach is we say, hey, we could got to help our business partners. Our business partners, that means the likes of the organizers. These guys are suffering. These guys are unable to do physical event. You know, uh, how are they going to survive, right? So the e-commerce was one of the uh, uh, initiative, mm-hmm. right? The next initiative, which we actually pull off, uh, which I'm quite proud of, is actually we actually established a platform for virtual runs, for virtual events. Mm-hmm. Because we have this feeling that, after some time, the Malaysians runner who get itchy, they cannot stand it, they will definitely go out and run. Because predominantly virtual run is not very popular in Malaysia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, prior to pandemic, they are spoiled with choices. Every weekend, they have five, ten races which they can choose from. They don't even want to run any virtual run. Mm. Right? So uh, we took the gamble. We feel that virtual run will come back. So we started developing our submission engine. You see, if you understand virtual run, virtual run, the perception of why Malaysians do not join is basically they they see virtual run as something uh, uh, fun, something not competitive. And the, the image with virtual run is people think virtual run is merely selling merchandise, selling T-shirts, selling medals, right? You join a uh, virtual run, whether you run, you don't run, you will get a T-shirt, right? But mm. we be a serious race provider, we say, hey, that's not the way the virtual run should be run. A virtual run can be fun, can be competitive, can be serious, right? So we develop this uh, engine where we allow people to actually use any application on your phone that can track your running, your time, and your cycling. You can actually submit it into our platform and which goes live into our leaderboard. So you will see our leaderboard of your standing and so on. 
of course we could not 100% uh, uh, verify that uh, the time but at least it is as close to a competitive field that uh, you can get right you have to achieve certain uh, fulfillment before you can actually get your t-shirt so we it is not a program where we sell t-shirts right mm. so with the platform on board we noticed that a lot of our physical event organizers started to embark on or introduce their own version of virtual runs right and today is like the norm a lot of mm. people are doing their virtual runs uh, uh, campaign which is so good for them because at least people remember their brand of their event and when the physical event comes back they could probably come back you know after that so so that, that that was the first phase right that was the first thing we did that was for the organizer so right now we are into our second phase right now we are actually targeting the uh, the, the runners the community right and the industry per se right uh, recently we launched two campaign one we call it Malaysia Marathon League so we actually create a league where people Malaysians across the nation actually runs and compete in the marathon, uh, marathon virtually, right? Uh, in fact, uh, to a few days ago was the last running date. I think next week we will announce which is the winning state. So we do events like that uh, to actually engage the people because people are really, you know, uh, mentally exhausted because of the pandemic. So we thought it's good to keep them, you know, uh, all uh, healthy and, and active again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. Now, you mentioned uh, earlier something I want to touch upon a bit, which is the idea of accountability, right? I mean, with a lot of um, the way that the sports and fitness industries went, there was this sort of, like you mentioned, this misconception that, you know, there's not really a way to sort of keep track of, uh, you know, your clients or the, the people who are involved in the activities actually being accountable, you know, even with, for example, let's say taking a virtual sports class at home, technically speaking, you you could, in theory, just put on the uh, live stream and not do anything, right? But, uh, you know, I find that really interesting that you, you built in accountability into your virtual run um, approach. And I think that is a really big uh, draw, right, for, uh, as you mentioned, the competitive nature uh, of the runners involved as well. Speaking of virtual events, though, um, you have this event, which is a collaboration, a CSR campaign with Raswa Buster. So tell me a little bit about this event and what it uh, what it involves. Okay, uh, Raswa Buster is actually an extension of our second phase. Uh, besides uh, coming up with the Marathon League, uh, we we were actually uh, in touch with Russell Buster when they did their campaign of uh, having, a, you know, to push for the, the awareness of anti-corruption. So we were actually talking to the organizers uh, of Russell Buster and say, why don't you use my platform, right, to create awareness, add an element of fun, right, uh, uh, to the entire campaign? Because as you know, anti-corruption is not exactly a, a fun subject or, you know, uh, that you can talk about. So we said, why don't we add in a element of fun? Why don't we let the people talk about it and spread it? So that's where we come up with the idea of, you know, every Malaysian, you pledge your walk, your steps, because every day as we go about doing our daily chores, we actually accumulate steps and we don't realize on the average, a person could easily, uh, I call it a, a inactive lifestyle, you probably would be uh, accumulating about 3000 steps a day. Mm -hmm. Right, the more uh, the more active one probably can go up to about ten, twelve thousand. Right, so you can actually keep track of the steps, contribute it into our leaderboard again. You know, just like the the running uh, or the races, you contribute to the leaderboard. It will accumulate over thirty days period how many steps you actually pledge or donated, so called, to the entire campaign. So we are actually targeting about ten thousand Malaysian. Uh, to contribute 100 million steps uh, as the, 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 you know, the strong message to say, hey, we Malaysians are actually against corruption culture, right? right? The campaign is ongoing right now. Anybody who is keen to support could actually sign up uh, through our website. Fantastic. And your website is uh, checkpointspot.asia, that's right? That's right. Awesome. So I want to ask you, uh, Benjamin, about the plans for the future. What are your potential ideas for expansion from this point? Uh, we, are, we are looking at two, uh, three major areas, actually, uh, uh, as part of our restructuring. Uh, the, the first area, of course, we have to uh, uh, upgrade our human resource capability because we are talking about doing much, much bigger things than what we used to do. So that is kind of uh, ongoing. But of course, 
uh, it's also set back, you know, uh, with the hiring process because of the pandemic and so on. Uh, so human resources is top of our list. The second part we were actually planning uh, last year in 2020 was to re uh, expand regionally. We were actually earmarked to expand to our neighboring countries, but all this plan was in a way delayed for a year because of uh, the situation. We should be in Indonesia pretty soon. We are targeting some other uh, regional countries like Thailand, Philippines, and Vietnam. Of course, the other part is also to the final part is to beef up on our technology forefront because we pride ourselves to be in the forefront of sports technology. In fact, we we just uh, kind of change our company tagline. So our company tagline today is redefining uh, technology in sports. So we are trying to bring all the forefront technology into the sports industry to make it more interesting, to make it more exciting. Right? Uh, two, two big areas that we are looking at. Partic uh, one in particular will be uh, we are trying to go a little bit deeper into data analytics because we actually got quite a lot of uh, a, a huge uh, community of runners and cyclists with us. So we want to bring them the experience of serving them the information that they need, the races that they like and so on. So we are uh, going to invest uh, heavily onto data analytics, uh, the big data sector. And we are also trying to look at artificial intelligence particularly in areas of uh, facial recognition and so on, to incorporate it into the services that we do at the race events to make the experience a bit different for all the runners. Yeah. All right. That's fantastic. And I'm looking forward to seeing uh, how your uh, Raswa Busters event goes uh, to get uh, all those steps in in the fight against corruption and also where you guys go from here in terms of your expansion. So thank you very much, Benjamin, for speaking to me today all about Checkpoint Spot. Thank you. I'm Christine Wong. You've been listening to Open for Business. If you've missed any of today's conversation, you can download our app that's available on the Apple App Store or Google Play. And you can also listen back to the podcast on BFM.my. This is BFM 89.9. Thank you for listening to this podcast. To find more great interviews, go to BFM.my or find us on iTunes. BFM 89.9, The Business Station.